In this video, we're looking at the third of our Gospel Essentials in this short series through um, Paul's address to the Ephesian elders here in Acts 20. And I called the sermon I preached on this section, Rely on God's Grace. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you to go watch the previous two videos uh, before this one from the earlier sections in Acts 20. And also, maybe just take the time to read from Acts 20 verse 17 all the way to the end of the chapter, just to familiarize yourself with what's been going on in this address to the Ephesian elders. And take some time to pray and ask God to help you to understand his word for yourself. Pray that God would stir your own heart through his truth to you. And pray that you would be equipped to both understand and then be able to teach it to others. In the first section we looked at in Acts 20 verse 17 to 27, we saw that key phrase that Paul said in verse 24, My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. And it really is God's grace that is central to all that Paul is saying here. God's grace is central to all of Scripture. And that's why we see him in this section say, Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. This whole section is pivoting around the word of God's grace here. Yeah. So for that context within this passage, uh, verse 24 is worth looking at. And something we see, he started also back in verse 18 by saying, You know how I live. And in this section we also see him um, speaking about himself a lot. Now he's not trying to put the spotlight on himself uh, in an unhelpful way, um, but he is wanting to show how relying on God's grace enabled or caused him to be uh, a, gr a person living with a grace-shaped life. So just looking at those, I commit you, this is all uh, focused on these Ephesian elders and he's telling them specific uh, gospel essentials that they need in order to keep going and keep growing and keep doing the work that God had called them to do. Throughout this bigger section, Paul has said a few times, you yourselves know or you know. He said it in verse 18, uh, he said it back in verse 20, and here in this section again, you know, and he's pointing to his own example. But the, the key verse for us to focus in on here really is verse 32. Everything in this big section uh, pivots around what Paul says here in verse 32. So he says, I commit you. These are his final words. Uh, he stops speaking here in verse um, 35. And then we're just told some of the details about his leaving, which we'll look at in the next video. But these are his final words to them. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. Uh, even though Paul was leaving them, he knew that he was leaving them in the safe hands of God. And he was leaving them knowing God's grace and being able to continue in God's grace. And that's what uh, Paul wants them to do. He says, God's grace can build you up. God's grace can give you an inheritance. God's grace can sanctify you. And this word uh, for in the Greek for build up is normally used in the building industry for building a house slowly, brick, brick by brick. And if you take these two together, build you up and sanctify, they really are two sides of the same coin. It is that uh, gradual growing righteousness. And it is the word of God's grace, uh, which is what will keep them going in their Christian life, building them up, making them more like Jesus, sanctifying them. So those two concepts uh, work together and it's just so important for us to see not only does God's grace save, if you think about Paul's letter to the Ephesians in Ephesians 2 he says it is by grace you have been saved and he says that they were dead and they've been brought alive. Now that is uh, the, the work of God's grace to justify us. It's a past action in the life of a Christian and then we've got this idea of being sanctified, which is a 
ongoing, day-by-day, gradual growing righteousness. So God's grace justifies us in the past. It sanctifies us day-by-day in the present. And it is by God's grace that we will get to glory. So justification, sanctification, and glorification, all because of God's grace to us. We will be given an inheritance one day. And Paul says, I commit you to God and to the word of his grace because he wants them to rely on that grace for their whole lives, past, present, future. They need to keep resting in, relying on God's grace. And just how in uh, the beginning of his speech in verse 18, Paul said, you know how I live. In these last verses, he wraps up his speech by also reminding them of how he lived. And he gives a couple of examples. He said, I haven't coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. Uh, And this is grace-shaped living. God's grace had saved him, was building him up. And it was seen here in contentment. He's saying, I haven't coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. Because he wasn't in it for the money. He wanted to see sinners saved. And so the word of God's grace uh, lived out in Paul's life, made him content. Uh, The word of God's grace lived out in Paul's life, made him hardworking, which you see in the next section, he's saying, with these hands of mine, I've supplied my own needs, this kind of hard work. Uh, He shows that he is hardworking. He doesn't want to be a burden to those who he's ministering to. And so he works hard, all with the great hope of seeing others come to know the word of God's grace. And this is this word of grace working in Paul. Uh, It is his gradual growing righteousness worked out in that he is content with what God has given him. He is hard working. And then he ends the section with just this final grace-shaped living. And he models to them generosity. When he says here, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is one of those uh, interesting occasions where these words, it's more blessed to give than to receive, aren't actually recorded in the Gospels for us. Uh, But as John says in John 20, that Jesus did and said many other things that are not recorded. This is one of those phrases of Jesus that wasn't recorded in the Gospels, but Paul records it here for us. And we can know and trust that Jesus did indeed say these words, that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And this is modeling generosity, and Jesus modeled this in his own life, that God gave his son, who gave his life, so that we might know this grace that saves us, this grace that keeps building us up, this grace that will get us to our inheritance one day. So Jesus modeled that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Paul followed that example, and he was calling these Ephesian elders to do the same, to live generously. And so we are given this beautiful picture of grace-shaped living. God's grace builds us up. God's grace grows us uh, to be more like Jesus. God's grace grows our hope. Uh, We have this great inheritance coming. God's grace makes us content. God's grace causes us to work hard. And God's grace makes us generous. And we should be rejoicing in the fact that God is at work in us day by day, making us more like Jesus. He's building us up. This gradual growing righteousness. And this is massively encouraging for us as we think about our own lives and our own struggle to live like Jesus. We can hear Paul's words where he says to these elders, I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. The same God who shows grace, who was at work in Paul's day, is still at work today. And so we can trust that we as his children are also have been committed to him and to this word of his grace. God will be at work in us. He'll continue building us up those areas where we are struggling. He will slowly, gradually make us more like Jesus, which he's promised to do. And we can know for sure, because of God's grace, our inheritance is absolutely secure.
Paul himself knew the grace that had saved him. He knew the grace that was at work within him, making him more like Jesus. He knew this grace that would get him to eternity. And grace really is a big theme in all of Paul's writings. But just to focus on uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, we see Paul speaking about God's grace in 1 verse 7, 2 verse 5, 2 verse 7, 2 verse 8, 4 verse 7. So God's grace was a theme that he, Paul wanted them to, to know and hold tightly to because he knew that they needed to rely on God's grace in order to keep going. And what a joy that we can look at a passage like this and know that the same God who was at work in Paul, who Paul committed these elders to, he's the God who's our God. He's at work within us, and his grace within us will continue to build us up and sanctify us. His grace within us will keep us going to the end. He will help us to be a people who are content and hardworking and generous, all while we live in response to who he is and what he's done for us in Christ as we rejoice in God's grace, his free and unmerited favor shown to guilty sinners who deserve only his judgment. And that is what grace is. Well, God bless as you dig further into this passage, as you rejoice in God's grace. And may God's grace be the thing that continues to build you up, sanctifying you, and may you trust in God's grace to get you to this glorious inheritance that has been promised to all those who belong to Jesus and those who are being sanctified by this grace. Well, God bless as you dig in further.